Uh, you mentioned the Sunset uh, 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 Review of the Railroad Commission a couple of times, so let me go there specifically. So we did have a Sunset Report, or Advisory Commission report on recommendations that you all ought to adopt, and then we had in November a response from the Commission institutionally, speaking on behalf of the Commission. And I want to ask you about a couple of things. Which, there. by Obviously, the way, did not happen last session. There was no right. response, response back from the Commission. Okay. Well, the, it was helpful to get a window on the thinking of the Commission institutionally. We know about the name change that's coming. I guess it will be the Texas Energy Resources, Resources Commission. Commission. I think it's a little bit of alphabet soup, TCEQ, TERC. I've already got a headache thinking about this, but okay. So you're going to, finally it will be more properly named. We got that. There was some discussion of you all having a hand in. They recommended, and you actually agreed with this, having a hand in regulating or having oversight over interstate as well as intrastate pipelines. Can you talk about that? Pipelines uh, are very important because we need to make sure they're operated safely. Right. And so what we want to make sure is that we have the resources and the jurisdiction to inspect yep. and to review and to make sure that we have pipeline integrity and that everyone it can be assured that pipelines are safe. And this is our objective. And effectively one standard covering both intra and interstate pipelines. Right. T today there are interstate pipelines, and we don't have jurisdiction over, over those, those right. but we do have jurisdiction over intrastate, right. and we think we have the expertise and ability to ride herd over both of them. The, the Railroad Commission is, has for a long time been criticized for not having robust enough inspections or enough inspectors. So if you want to take on the additional responsibility of doing interstate as well as intrastate, do you have enough personnel, enough inspectors to actually carry this off properly? We've actually requested uh, that we'd be able to add some additional people for yeah. inspection. Uh, one of the issues with regard to our personnel is out in the district offices where the inspectors live, we had gotten too lean, and in my opinion, we had too many people in Austin and not enough people out in the districts. You're trying to change So that. we're changing that. Right. We want to be adding people out right. in the district offices where the work gets done. Right and using the least amount of people as we can in yeah. Austin, which is the administrative person. So, of course, there were these recommendations, and again, in many instances, the Commission's response back was, we generally agree with this. But there were a couple of which you didn't agree, and they really related not to the substantive work of the Commission, but to the aspects of the Commissioner's own political activity. And I want to ask about that, because that is where the big pushback was. Three things in particular caught my eye. The first was the suggestion, seems perfectly reasonable what the Sunset Commission is, is suggesting to me, that when there are contested cases before the Commission, that Commissioners should not accept contributions from the producers involved in those contested cases. Logically, it seems to me, and it may seem to other people, well, yeah, the perception of you all being in the pocket of industry is not helped by the idea that when there are contested cases before the Commission, you're taking contributions from those producers. But institutionally, the Commission said, we disagree with that recommendation. Why is that? Well, let's remember, this is an elected office, and it's a big state. And having just run the first time, uh, I can tell you that it's also an expensive state to run a campaign. So we want to be treated just like every other statewide elected official, non-judicial. Apply the same rules to us that you would apply to anyone else. That is generally our position on all of these recommendations associated with campaign finance. So you don't think that the perception of you all being in the pocket of industry is, is fostered or advanced by the idea that when people have business contested cases before the Commission, you all effectively have your hands out to those very people? We make decisions based upon the facts and the law. I've always done that. I did that my seven and a half years at the PUC, and I'll continue to do it here, yeah. unaffected by campaign contributions. You have to run for office. It's an elected position. Right. In order to do that, you need to raise some money. Okay, so to that specifically, there was a second recommendation from Sunset that institutionally the commission disagreed with, although I gather you may disagree with at least one of your fellow commissioners on this, that the period of time in which you can solicit and collect contributions at the moment is all six years of the term. It was a recommendation that it be limited to 18 months. Institutionally, the commission said, we disagree with that recommendation, although I've read at least one place where you've said, I, Barry Smitherman, am actually okay with 18 months. Commissioner Porter was not okay with 18 months. In, in talking to former commissioners, several of them told me that there used to be a gentleman's, gentle lady's agreement that the only commissioner who would actively campaign and raise money would be the one that was running next, the right. one that was up. Right. And that seemed to me like a good idea. Right. You've just run, so you wouldn't then have any motivation or impetus to I, collect contributions right now. You know, I just came off of a 17-month campaign, and we did 
we did fine right. raising money starting last August. Uh, so I put that on the table as an idea that I thought the commission could address itself. I don't think it needs to be done in statute. I think we could do it ourselves. And when uh, Christy Craddock comes on board, maybe we'll talk about it again. I think it's a bad idea to put these sort of limitations in statute, but I was comforted by the fact that in the past, the commissioners had taken care of the issue themselves. So again, I, I ask you again about the perception that somehow the Railroad Commission is in the pocket of industry. This is not a concern, generally speaking? I think we have to conduct ourselves appro uh, appropriately. We have to make the right decisions. We have to study the issues. We have to work hard. I think I come to this position with a reputation of working very hard and being knowledgeable about the issues, and that's the way I'm going to base my decision. It's an elected office. We do have to run, right. and we have to raise money. All right, let me try then, un unsuccessful in the first two, uh, let, me, <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me try a third recommendation of the Sunset Commission that, again, you all institutionally said we don't agree with, and that is that when someone on the commission announces for another office, they have to resign immediately from the commission. Again, seems reasonable. You all said no, we don't agree with that. Uh, no one else in state government has to do that. Right. Nobody else at the state level has to do it. And I think this is more a reflection of frustration last session uh, because two of the railroad commissioners were running for the U.S. Senate at the same time against each other. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that's a dynamic that, uh, that many found unpalatable. Made a bunch of oil and gas lobbyists a lot poorer for no reason, <laughs> since neither one of them won that office. So uh, our position is just treat us like everybody else. We shouldn't have to resign to run. Nobody right. else has to.